What's up guys, welcome back. It's your girl Morgan looking fresh as ever. Definitely not exhausted. If you're new to my channel, hi, I'm Morgan. I'm a recent UX UI design bootcamp graduate and I just make videos documenting my journey from digital marketing into UX design and I offer advice where I can. So if you're wondering why I look like straight up death, I've been going on a lot of interviews recently and ones that I really, really want. So I've been studying a lot and I've been just doing interview prep and also doing their design assessments. I apologize that in my last video, I was super like not energetic. I had just come out of one of my interviews and I was just super drained. So that's what I've been doing. I've also been working on an updated UX design planner. I'm going to include stickers. It's gonna be more colorful. The other one gets the job done, but it's not as fun to look at. Look out for that soon. Anyway, today's video. I got a lot of complaints about one of my more popular videos about learning UX design online. The audio is terrible, I know. I had gotten a lot of complaints, but I didn't know how to fix it, and now it's just been so long that I figure I should just make an updated video. That one is still up if you have supersonic hearing and you wanna go watch it, but why would you? This video will be a little bit different from my original video because that one was more about platforms that I actually used, like specific platforms. This one's going to be about different methods. So number one is of course boot camps. This is an extremely effective way to learn UX design online, and in my opinion, it's the best way to learn online. It's a structured way of learning the foundation of UX design, and then you get really in-depth immersion, at least I did in my course, I can't speak for other courses. For those of you who don't know, I graduated from Career Foundry and there are several videos on my experience, you can go watch them. But it's the most structured, in-depth way to learn UX design in my opinion. And it's a great way to get started in UX, it's a great way to start learning, and boot camps are often career focused, which is extremely important. Popular boot camps include Career Foundry, which is the one that I graduated from, there's Springboard, Design Lab, and General Assembly, and there's a lot more, but those are sort of the main ones that people use. The price of a boot camp can range anywhere from $6,000 to $15,000, depending on what you choose. It could be cheaper, depending on the quality of the program, but out of the major ones that I've listed, that's the general price range. And the time commitment could be anything from 10 weeks up to a year and then you come out with a certificate. And I know that people say certifications don't matter. I've also said that because it really is about the skill, but by having that on my resume, I have had recruiters and I have had interviewers ask me about my experience during my bootcamp because they saw that on my resume and they wanted to get an understanding of what my knowledge is like and what my education was like. If you choose to go this route, really make sure that you make the most of it and treat it like a job. Don't phone it in for the certification because while I have said that it matters on your resume, it does not actually help you. Just having the certification does not help your skill set. Really work on it like it's your full-time job. Next is online education platforms. The main ones are Skillshare, Udemy, Coursera, and Interaction Design Foundation, which is a specific UX UI design platform. These range anywhere from free to $150 a course. It really depends on what platform you use and if you're using their free or premium content. If you're going to choose one of the four that I mentioned, I would really recommend either using Coursera, that you can get a subscription for either $50 dollars a month for the course that you're doing like per course which is pricey or you can do what I did and purchase the $400 annual Coursera Plus plan. If you have your eye on a specific course, I really recommend going in and looking to see if it's part of that Coursera Plus plan. They aren't all, but the majority of courses are. And I think that you get really great value. I would also recommend doing Interaction Design Foundation. That's $16 a month or $200 a month if you choose to get a mentor slash coach as well. I like those two platforms because they are taught by credible people from the field or actual professors from universities on Coursera. And I think that they're the most structured and you also get homework and you generally do get feedback. It really depends on the program slash professor or instructor that you choose because some of them can really take their course seriously and others just don't interact with you at all. So it really depends, but those two are the ones that I think provide the most value. For me, Skillshare is good for supplemental creativity, if that makes any sense. I wouldn't use it to learn UX UI design, but if I wanted to learn how to use a certain tool 
or if I wanted to get better at creating color palettes or something, I would go to Skillshare for that. I believe that if you get the annual plan, it's like less than $10 a month. And Udemy is not something that I'm a huge fan of anymore. I used to really get excited because I was like, oh wow, these $150 courses are on sale for $9. And it's like, oh, they're literally always on sale. If you're going to do Udemy, I would recommend just waiting for a sale to happen. I guarantee it will happen. I don't like paying per course anymore. I prefer subscription-based plans like Skillshare or Coursera because if I don't like a course that I'm currently taking, I can switch to a new one uh, or exercise different parts of my brain by taking multiple courses at once. That's not the case for Udemy. You have to pick a course, go based off of the preview that they give you, and then hope that it works out. So I'm not a huge fan of that, but if there is a course that you have your eye on or a UX designer that has a course on there that you really like that person, go for it. But make sure that it's on sale. Number three is design jams. So if you don't know what a design jam is, it's essentially an event. They're often in person, but they are online as well. Adobe does them online. And it's a scheduled event where you have to choose at least one other person to work with. You can work in a team of two or three. It really depends on the design jam. And you're given a prompt and a deadline. So you work with your partner or your team for a set amount of time, and you have to submit some sort of design, whether it's an application or website or a redesign or whatever it is and you have to submit it before the deadline it's critiqued and the winner generally gets a prize the thing about design jams is that they're kind of difficult to come across i stumbled across the one that i participated with career foundry let all the students know that adobe was doing a design jam with nasa for students of boot camps but they're often accessible to college kids which unfortunately I am not one anymore, so they are kind of difficult to find. You also need a foundational understanding of UX design unless you partner up with someone who's also a beginner because otherwise that person's going to be depending on you and you don't want to be like, dead weight, so to speak, unless that person really just doesn't care and maybe they're looking to mentor somebody. So Design Jam's fantastic way to learn. You get experience working in a team, you get experience working with a prompt, you get experience working with a deadline, and then there are often workshops involved. So fantastic learning experience, but of course that downside is that you do need foundational experience and they are hard to come across. Number four is design challenges. Design challenges are not the same as design jams. Design challenges are something that you just sign up for and then you receive the prompt, generally through email. There's dailyui.co, uxtools.co, uxchallenge.co. You can really just Google UX design challenge and you'll find a whole bunch. So you'll get very simple prompts, generally a one screen project where you're asked to design a desktop landing page, a questionnaire or a sign up page. And they're very simple and it's kind of fun to do it when you're a beginner and then later down the line when you have more experience doing those same challenges and just seeing how you've evolved. Number five is university certifications. A university certification is exactly what it sounds like. It's a certification that is provided by a university. I have done one of these and I did not have the greatest experience, honestly. The information was really cool, but my experience felt like this program was just a side hustle for the university. It was just a bunch of pre-recorded videos and when I would reach out and ask for help, I really didn't get a response. I would have technical issues or rather they would give us programs or files that just didn't work. and. I would reach out for help and it would take a while to get help and then I started missing deadlines because of this. I just wound up not finishing it honestly. I went back and I looked at the information because I'd like to apply it to future projects but they just made me download so much stuff for one-off projects that it was really messing with my laptop and then it wouldn't work. So it was very frustrating. The information was cool like I said but that was just my one-time experience doing it. There are tons of universities that do UX design programs, and one of the really cool things is that they'll focus on something. My focus was for voice UI and sound UI and AR and VR design, so that was super interesting to me. There are other ones that are focused on maybe accessibility or maybe using a certain design program. I know that Rutgers has a UX design program that talks a lot about the business aspect of things. So if you watched my previous video, 
about finding your unique design perspective. You can find a specialized course that appeals to your needs as a UX designer. They're everywhere. I know Cornell has a program, FIT has a program, like I said, Rutgers has a program. There are tons of programs out there and I'm sure that you'll find one that will be super interesting to you. Another downside is that they can be incredibly expensive. I believe the one that I took was $2,500 for like a seven week course. But the topic was so interesting that it was worth it to me and it turned out like not really being worth it. <laughs> so that's why I recommend only doing this if you have the disposable income to do so or if you feel like the course would provide a lot of value. But $2,500 for seven weeks, it doesn't really add up for me. Number six is online communities. Online communities are dope. You can join these communities on Slack, Discord, Facebook, LinkedIn, or even platforms like Interaction Design Foundation like I mentioned earlier. In these groups you can ask for design feedback, career advice, mentorship, study buddies, there's just so much you can do. Though through online communities you're not necessarily learning directly from someone, you can still use this effectively in conjunction with another method, like if you're doing design challenges, instead of just designing something being like, oh that's cool, and then, you know, shoving it in the back of your closet, you can post that into an online community, get feedback, ask for help, ask what other people would do differently, and it's incredibly valuable and you learn a lot. I know that Iterate UX has a Discord group, you can go on their website and join that. There's tons of Slack groups, I'll leave a directory down below. I'm not necessarily going to recommend anything for Facebook because there are so many and they all have different focuses, so there are groups specifically for feedback, there are groups specifically for certain programs, there's groups specifically for career advice, so I'm going to leave that up to you. And then LinkedIn I think is best used for professional connections and job postings rather than trying to get design feedback. Seven is mentorship. The benefits of mentorship is that you get individualized feedback from someone who's in the industry. The cons of having a mentor is actually gauging the value of your mentor. Mentors can be very expensive, like $100 for a portfolio review that takes 30 minutes. That's a lot of money. So even though you're getting feedback from someone who's in the industry, how can you actually gauge how valuable that is? Because if it's just very basic things about your portfolio that they're fixing, like foundational things that they're giving you advice on, you could learn that from an online community for free. And then anything beyond that is sort of just an opinion. Even though they're in the industry, it does not mean that they're going to know what hiring managers are going to want to see just because they got hired. But of course, mentorship can also be free. You can reach out to someone on LinkedIn or through one of your online communities and just ask for a 30 minute coffee together. In general, if you want advice or a portfolio review, I would really recommend just joining an online community first. If there's a specific person that you want mentorship from, like you really like their style or they're in an industry that you wanna be in, then that's awesome. 100% go for it, that is invaluable. But if you're just looking for just general advice, online community is probably better and it's free. If you are interested in finding a mentor, reach out to them on LinkedIn. Try Super Peer. There's also Mentor Cruise. Just try and really determine why you're seeking out a mentor and make sure that you're not wasting your money. Number eight is YouTube. YouTube is a great place to learn UX design at any level. And I've recently become a big fan of Maddie Beard. She puts up a lot of really helpful videos about Adobe XD and she makes it so easy to learn. So that's more of an instructional YouTuber. Charlie Chung, I'm so sorry if I pronounced her name wrong. She's also a fantastic YouTuber. I've been watching her for a while now and she does design with me videos that are super helpful where she shows you how she creates her own passion projects. Then of course there's Chun Buns, she is a giant in the UX YouTuber market. Even though she doesn't post that often anymore, she does have very helpful videos about how she uses her design process day to day. So she has one video about her user flows that's super helpful. And of course there's me. Lastly, number nine is recreations. This is a free and very simple way to learn UX design. You just look at an app that you like and you try to recreate it. So take a screenshot and put it in your Figma file or whatever design program that you use and just try to recreate it, the sizing, the typography. This is really useful for both UX design and UI design because you learn about contrast, you learn about hierarchy, you learn about sizing. I've also heard that this is how front-end developers will often learn how to code. And then you learn about UX design because you're sort of disassembling this app and going through it bit by bit and understanding how things connect and the high 
hierarchy of things and the information architecture and you can learn a lot from this. So there you go guys, the updated nine ways to learn UX design online video. I hope that you found this helpful. If you guys really just want me to talk about specific platforms, I can make a new video about that or I can just try and fix my old video, but I thought that this would be a better way to go about it. If I missed anything, please leave it down below. I'm sure that I could learn something from you. And I would really appreciate if you gave this video a like and subscribe, it helps me out a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.